Hi, my name is Brittany, and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Zoo. Today's topic is all about journaling. And there are many different ways to journal, and there's no right or wrong way. So I'm gonna take you through some different techniques we can do when we're outside in nature. So whether you're gardening, hiking, or just exploring, for today's video, all you're gonna need is a pencil and your journal. So go ahead and grab those items and let's get started. For my first journal entry, I found an Eastern Carpenter Bee. Using the field guide, I found out that it's in the family Apidae. I also learned its scientific name, which I included down below under the picture. Now if you look closely, the words probably look very different than what we're normally used to seeing. That's because scientific names are actually in Latin. And the reason they're in Latin is for a very specific reason. This way, no matter which region or country a scientist is from, using the scientific name, they'll know the exact animal or plant that they're discussing. Because common names can vary region to region, let's think about, for example, a cougar is sometimes known as a puma or even a mountain lion. But the scientific name is exactly the same for all three. So just their common name is a little different. I also included the date that I found this carpenter bee, what the temperature was like, and the location, just in case I wanna see if I can find another one later. Now, the temperature can be important because here in Missouri we have different seasons and sometimes animals migrate or they might even hibernate. So you might see an animal year round or only part of the year. In the case of the Eastern Carpenter Bee, they actually hibernate in winter. So I don't think I'll be seeing these friends in our colder months of the year. Down below, I call this my curiosity circle. I was really curious about their feet. When I got closer to this Carpenter Bee, well, not too close, because I didn't want to bother him. I noticed that there were little anchor shapes. And when I used the field guide, it discussed that they have small claws to help them grip onto the plants. My next journal entry is a little different than the first one. We all go out into nature for various reasons, whether it be to explore, to exercise, or even just to take a break from the hustle and bustle of our daily lives. This journal entry style I think about is more of a mindfulness practice. And with mindfulness, we want to be more present in the moment and try to clear our minds of all the worries and stress that we feel day to day. Now, when I was sitting in my backyard, I noticed the life cycle of a dandelion. These plants are often viewed as common weeds. However, I noticed that there was so much beauty in seeing how it transforms and also how many animals came to visit them to get nectar including the zebra swallowtail. There was another interesting plant nearby known as a mock strawberry. It looks similar to the strawberries that we eat. However, they're teeny tiny and they never quite get that large. Lastly, I wanted to include a quote by John Muir. In every walk with nature, one receives far more than he seeks. With your mindfulness journal, you may feel inspired to write your own poetry. Maybe you have a quote that you really feel a connection with when you're outside in nature. Another way to mindfully journal is to not have a set plan before you go out and then sit in nature and see what you discover. I shared a few techniques with you today for nature journaling and these are just the ones that I prefer, but there's still more. And I know someone who has some really awesome ideas to share too. Let's go ahead and see what she has to share. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I did some nature journaling too. Let's take a look at how I chose to record what I saw. I did some nature journaling in my backyard last October. I used crayons and a pen. When I found something interesting that I wanted to draw, I used my pen to write down where I found it, and I realized that I also had questions about each of the things that I saw. 
So I made sure to write down the questions that I had next to each picture. One of the first things I found were some acorns on the ground. I really like acorns, so I chose to draw them in my journal. A question I had though was, do deer like to eat acorns? So I wrote that down too. I walked to another part of the yard and I found a deer track in the mud. It seemed to be a better deer track than I had discovered before, so I wanted to draw it in my journal. A question that I had though was, were the deer here in the yard to eat the acorns? Do they like to eat acorns? In another part of our yard, I found a lot of clover. A question that I had with the clover was, do deer come here in our yard to eat the clover? Just like with the acorns? I decided to take some of the clover and press it into my journal instead of drawing it. I chose to leave the clover flowers in our yard though for the pollinator animals like bees the next nature journal entry i have is from march i chose to do this one a little differently i did leaf rubbings and i wrote in my journal about what i saw and what it reminded me of i found some pawpaw tree leaves i wanted to do leaf rubbings of them so i put the leaves underneath my journal paper took a crayon, placed it on its side, and then you hold the crayon and rub it side to side. And all of the bumps, the veins, and the texture from the leaves should show up on your paper. I chose to draw the flowers that I found on the pawpaw tree because I thought they were really unique and interesting. If you find something interesting, go ahead and draw it in your nature journal and make sure to record when you saw it. That way, if you wanna find it again, you'll know what time of year to look for it. I did some research when I got back home to find out what happens to the pawpaw flowers. They become pawpaw fruit that is often called the prairie banana because they taste like bananas when they're ripe. I wrote about what I discovered in my research in my nature journal so that I could find those notes later. What is really wonderful about nature journaling is it can take you back to times when you had fun in nature with friends or family. And that's what happened when I was doing this journaling and I wrote it down here on the page. What a nature adventure. I really enjoyed adding some new pages to my nature journal today. And I hope that you're also feeling inspired to start your own journal or add to the one you already have. Thank you again for joining me for today's journaling video. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Go outside, explore, and see what you'll discover.